Hey guys. With the release of 12th gen CPUs from Intel, many people are now in the market for a cooler to tame the beast and get the most performance out of it. In this video, kindly sponsored by Asus, we'll be checking out their lineup of liquid all-in-one coolers to see which one may be most suitable for your build. For this particular build, we'll be using Intel i9-12900K CPU running on Asus Maximus Hero Z690 motherboard. For the case, we went with the ASUS Tough Gaming GT501. It's pretty big, but we need something big enough to support all of these coolers. Speaking of which, we have a budget option, Cooler Master 212 ARGB Air Cooler as a baseline, two 240ml coolers, Tough Gaming Liquid Cooler, and second generation of ROG Strix Cooler. And last but certainly not least, the top of the line ROG Ryogen version 2. Prior to choosing a cooler, there are a few considerations to do starting with the required space. For example, tower coolers like this require a reasonably large amount of height clearance above the CPU and normally not suitable for smaller cases, while liquid all-in-one coolers need space for the radiator as well as managing the tubes. Another consideration is cooler mounting options. You want to make sure that the cooler you're ordering has the right support bracket for your CPU. In this case, we had to pick up some additional brackets for Intel's latest LJ1700 socket as it's not compatible with the original version of a Cooler Master air cooler. With Asus, all new stock in the market will be bundled with a new bracket, so you should be covered there. Other parameters you should look out for is cooling capacity. Larger coolers with more mass as well as faster spinning fans provide more cooling. You'll need to check out what the maximum heat output of your CPU has and ideally get a cooler with more capacity to ensure quiet and cool operation. In our example, I can already tell ahead of time that Cooler Master 212 is not enough for our power hungry 12900K, but we'll have to see by how much when we check out the results later on. Let's now dive a little deeper into these coolers from ASUS, starting with similarities. All three of these units use ASTEC pumps, have pre-applied thermal paste and feature 6 years of warranty. The more budget version Tough Gaming 240ml liquid cooler is using two ARGB fans which can reach up to 2000 RPM. The next tier up is Strix 240ml liquid cooler version 2 and it's using considerably faster fans that can reach up to 2500 RPM. This in turn provides more cooling at the cost of acoustics. Both Tough and Strix units include fan and ARGB splitter cables to help cable management, as well as to ensure you have enough headers to connect to. Tough Gaming LED Splitter comes with three headers and actually requires all three, while Strix cable splits into four headers only requiring two. This provides extra for your other components should you ever need to, which is a nice little touch. Lastly, we have Ryogen Cooler. Our particular version comes in 360mm size and features three Noctua industrial PPC fans with maximum speed of 2000 RPM. There's also a variant with ASUS ARGB fans if you're interested. The big difference from the other coolers is the huge contraption above the pump. It includes 3.5 inch LCD display where you're able to show your own custom animations or system stats such as temperature, fan speeds or frequency, or even go all the way up to the IDA64 Extreme integration. Also, below the screen, there's a small fan that blows air towards the VRM and M.2 heatsinks to provide extra cooling, which is always useful. In this package, you also have an AAO fan controller, which supports up to four fans and four ARGB headers. It comes in a 2.5 inch form factor with extra 3M tape should you wish to stick it somewhere rather than screw it in. The cooler certainly screams premium and it has a price to match. There is not that many all-in-one coolers out there in the market as unique as this. What do you think? Is it too much or on the contrary adds a lot of character to your build? By the way, if you enjoy this content, do consider subscribing. Let's now jump into performance metrics. As I mentioned earlier, we are using top of the line chip from Intel, their 12900K. For these tests, we left it at stock settings with multi-core enhancement turned off. This particular case does not come with any built-in fans, so we've installed three Arctic fans at the back and top for exhaust, and we used the front position for the AAO coolers. Ideally, you want to make sure that the radiator is the highest part of the loop with the tubes running down, thus leaving space at the top of the radiator for any trapped air in the future. This will improve longevity of the system, but it may not always be possible due to specific case configurations. All of our testing was done at a distance of 50 centimeters in a room with an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. For fan control, we set both Arctic fans to 50% speed, which was below our room noise floor of 32 dBA. Then we noise normalized all the fans to hit 40 dBA target to keep things consistent. This is where we see the first bit of results. To hit our targets, the fan speeds of the Tough Gaming Cooler were set to 80%, Strix at 56%, and Ryogen at 66%, so there's still clearly some headroom if needed. We ran Barcelona Pavilion Blender benchmark, which certainly got our CPU working to its full speed. 
and found rather interesting results. Render times were only a few seconds of each other. If we look closer, we see that the CPU was able to push harder while using Strix and Ryogen coolers. This is clearly visible in the wattage graph where all three coolers start off strong and after a little while, Tough Gaming cooler starts to thermal throttle and CPU reduces its speed to allow for cooling deficiency. Others follow but slowly and never drop as much. The reason we look at power consumption rather than temperature is pretty simple. They all fairly quickly hit 100 degrees and that's where CPU starts to naturally reducing its speed to stay within thermal limits. I did mention that Cooler Master budget unit is not enough for the CPU. Even at full speed, it was not able to handle this load almost immediately thermal throttling, which in turn is wasting performance on this high-end CPU. This cooler would be more suitable for lower-end CPUs like i3 or i5 series. With noise normalized results out of the way, we can now check out results of all of these liquid rolling one coolers with stock settings where fans are allowed to go up to 100% while under heavy load. In the same test, we see that both Tough and Strix coolers reach 100 degree mark. However, Ryogen actually manages to maintain temperatures at the high 90s. To double check for any possible thermal throttling, we can look at the wattage graph, where we can see it is locked at 240 watts during the whole duration of the test. I also appreciate that many of you may not be using your PC for heavy productivity tasks, rather do some gaming. This is where the next benchmark comes in really handy. This is Firestrike Benchmark by 3 d Mark. It simulates 1080p gaming and in our setup it was running at around 100 FPS. In this thermal graph it is actually pretty hard to see which one of these coolers does better. This is because in gaming you always have a change of scenery and performance keeps fluctuating. Once we look at the CPU power consumption, this shows a slightly better picture. Here, while using Tough Gaming Cooler, the system is pulling less power, thus pushing not as hard to get those extra frames. While the other two coolers were clearly cooling the chip better, to allow for more thermal headroom so CPU can boost even more efficiently. It is clear that having a larger surface area, more overall mass and extra fan makes a difference in longer renders as well as gaming. Which brings us to the conclusion. For those of you who are on the budget, Tough Gaming Cooler is a good starting off point and will deliver adequate results. Going up to Strix class would improve that performance and also leave some headroom providing you okay with some extra noise during peak operation. If you're doing a lot of longer CPU centric tasks, then getting 360mm version will be very advantageous. This leaves Ryogen Cooler. This ultimately is a showpiece which also delivers great results while staying reasonably quiet due to the included Noctel PPC fans. I actually really like the inclusion of LCD screen while keeping the RGB to the minimum. For those who are planning to do some overclocking, the fan near the pump helps with cooling the VRM. Generally, it seems like Asus has a really dynamic lineup for most people. If you want to check out any of the items we've covered in the video today, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.